We've set up the global picture ahead of arguably a huge jobs number coming up. What exactly is the market setup going into this? Do you expect any big market reaction out of today's jobs number? Well, the market obviously watches now the NFP report in regards to the Federal Reserve because all eyes on the Fed in July, whether they're going to cut, or how much are they going to cut, whether it's 25 basis points or 50 basis points. So depending on, on the reaction to that, obviously we may see some up or, or down. Principally, I'm, I'm fascinated by having reached these new highs despite the uh, complete collapse in global yields, including the U.S. yields. A 10-year obviously was, is down to 1.95, 1.97%, which is 40% below where it was in November. No one had predicted this. All the economists were looking at 2.5 to 3.5% for 2019 hasn't happened and so we're seeing basically kind of what we've seen in, in past cycles when cycles come, come to, to an end we have low unemployment we still see markets making new highs and all these warning signs are being ignored this is dropping of yields inversions of yield curves growth slowing all of these things which are we are currently seeing not only globally, but also in the U.S. as well. That all sounds very, very negative, Sven. It doesn't sound like you're, like you're very positive about this at all. So does that mean that yields globally could still go down even more as people fly to the safety of government bonds in the face of what you call that slowing environment? <laughs> Well, look, the, the, the only re we're not at new highs in markets because of great revenue growth or earnings growth. We're in, in fact, it's quite the opposite. It is because of the drop in yields and because of the expectation that central banks are once again cutting rates and adding more stimulus. And from a policy perspective, I think that has to be concerning to everyone. For 10 years, we've been promised growth to come, which has not. We've had currently obviously the longest expansion on, on record but it's also the slowest expansion it's come at a steep price debt to gdp has increased from 65 percent to 105 percent in the last 10 years we have trillion dollar deficits we have the highest corporate debt we've ever had and growth is slowing the fed has promised inflation targets right the dot plot has turned into a fantasy plot it, it's never worked out the only thing that they've been able to do is Asset inflation, asset price inflation is not inflation in, in the real economy as they measure it at, at least. And of course, none of the central banks have normalized. So, so we're sitting at 225 basis points uh, on the Fed funds rate, right? and they're looking to cut again. I'm sorry, but there's, there's a big gap in narrative that I think is, is a problem because obviously at the end of the day, we keep repeating the same cycle over and over, which is lower rates at the end of each Fed rate hiking cycle we're adding more debt and we're producing marginally less growth each time around so but, what are we but, doing but, now but, we're going but, but, to cut but, rates again but does that mean that you fight the fed you fight the ecb you fight all of these easing authorities they have a lot of firepower and at this point markets keep making record highs so does this mean you buy these highs because the momentum still goes higher or are you waiting for some kind of a pullback it's a very good question, I and mean, there's no doubt, and this must be fully acknowledged, the Federal Reserve and central banks have once again in 2019 shown, have, they have demonstrated their power in markets. They keep obviously managing to come in whenever there is a pullback. You, you see speeches by central bankers such as Jay Powell come in, as he did at the beginning of June. Markets were correcting. He came in with a speech, and Powell, we see prices here back at new Hi. So it's a, it's, it's a very difficult environment to fade, but it's also a dangerous one to, to buy because none of these new highs have been confirmed on the underlying indexes. Many stocks are not participating in this. And from a technical perspective, what I'm looking at specifically here is this price range between 29.90 to 30.50. There's a lot of technical resistance ahead of us here. And if markets cannot sustain a move above that, then we're looking at what is called a broadening wedge pattern. It's, it's basically a megaphone. And if markets cannot cross above this trend line that I'm showing on this chart above and sustain a move above that, then the technical pattern, if the fundamentals, which are basically telling a, a different story, bear out, then we can target the lower trend line, which is around 2100 to 2200. That's a completely different story. It's basically confirming what the bond market is already saying in, in 
by the tenure, by the way, is now back to the levels of the U.S. election in 2016. Yeah. And this is where those prices would be heading to.